now gone through our browser and we've uh, taken the time to name all of our clips according to the script, the or, script. or in this case, what makes sense to you right. <laughs> as you're interpreting the script. Because that's actually important. It should make better sense to me since I'm the one using all these clips than to somebody else. Exactly. So here we are. We have everything named. Uh, so we don't have to, again, I said last time you don't have to watch and uh, name everything. Everything's ready to go. So we're now going to actually go and make selections and build a build a rough cut, right? Yeah, we're going to build a rough cut and you're going to see what kind of goes on in our heads. And the first thing we're going to need is somewhere to put all these clips as we choose the select. So I guess we should start to make a project. Right. So let's make a project. And I think a good name for this would be... Uh, RC, let's see, cupcake is so cupcake. cupcake RC1. Now, what do you think RC stands for? Rough cut? Very good. Right. And should we do cupcake with a K, the character's yeah, name? Yeah, the character's there name. There we go. Yeah, so for anybody watching this, I want them to know that you do know how to spell cupcake. I, I actually, cupcake I, is the crazy I, little elf quirky girl. Exactly. And being that We'll probably do more than one rough cut. We'll call it rough cut one. Mm -hmm. So great. We now have a timeline that we can work with. I want to work with my first clip. It's open wide. I know that conveniently it's at the top of my list. And so you've got to work an order from the script. Oh, there's an establishing shot. So that's a Well, let's, yeah, let's talk about that. I mean, a lot of people don't even know that starting strategy of, okay, do I do all my selects first and then organize them and number them and bring them in? Uh, how do I really get going that's going to be an efficient way to cut? You know, it's really interesting, though. I, it's, it's a little bit of, uh, I don't know, as a writer, you're, it's that same feeling where you're standing at a blank page. There's a little bit of anxiety about it. Oh, yeah. I mean, as an editor, the anxiety is I'm staring at an empty timeline. Uh, where do I start? I know I feel that way every time I sit down and edit. I've got all this footage, great stuff, but it's that first commitment. That's a, getting that right. first shot in there, right? And, and this is where people start, like, freaking themselves out. They're like... Okay, I have to have it all together and figure out what I'm going to do, and I have to be really precise with my selections. None of that is true. Your goal is to just get something down on paper. If you were a writer, just write. If you're an editor, throw clips on the timeline in what you think will be the order. You can always trim them later. You can relocate them by doing swap edits. You can swap them out. Right. By so doing replace if you're, uh, you know, if you're a writer, it's like, writer, just write. Yeah. Editor, just start editing. You know, I mean, obviously, just throw things uh, willy nilly, but. Just start. Right, I'm, and I'm not going to worry about, did I pick the perfect shot? Is it really tight? Okay, because I can re-edit. Writers rewrite, editors re-edit. So let's go ahead and start with the first series of clips. Okay. And I'm going to just skim right through this. And I see there are multiple zoom-ins or pushes or dollies, depending on uh, what tool you used in the shoot. And I want to break these up into to separate clips. Basically. Right, because the character's doing different things in those uh, little dolly And segments. I can only use one. Right. And in the old days, we do something called subclipping, which was very tedious. Right. And would use up a lot of hard drive space. But we're going to do something completely different now. Now, this is another cool trick. A lot of people get very frustrated that they click in Final Cut and it selects, selects the whole the clip. Selects the entire clip, right. And now they can't do that range selection real easily without, like, typing in reselect or whatnot. And all you need to do is if you hold down... The option key. If the clip is already selected. If it's already selected. If it's not already selected, it's different. It's the command right. key. Right. The command key. Right. So if the clip is selected, just the option key will allow you to drag out a selection range. So, and how do you clear a selection, Steve? Um, let's see. Same as Final Cut. Oh, option, option X. Option, option X. X. Yes. So, fresh slate. I'm not going to worry too much. I'm just going to skim through this. We have the slate there. You said there were no slates here. You. He's using it as a bounce card, okay? Okay, so we're pushing in, and I'm just going to click and drag. I could do this JKL and INO, but sometimes clicking and dragging can be very efficient using Final Cut 10. Right. So I'm going to get the whole push, the whole action, before the camera starts pulling back. Mm -hmm. That's my first There's your selection. first selection, right. And I can now make multiple selections or multiple range selections in this Single in other clip. words, multiple in and out points, essentially. Right. I'm not stuck with one. That's what's, I think, the really fantastic about Final Cut Pro 10. Now, there's a secret to this. You have to know the keyboard shortcut. To add to the, to add to the selection. Right, because if I just do another selection, It'll just... the first one disappears. Okay. So what is it, Steve? Uh, Your fingers know. My fingers okay. kind of know. So, it's so let's go back. The we'll go into the zoom in. I'm dragging across, holding down the command key. Right. 
I let go. Ah. And look, that's lit up and that's lit up. It's two selection ranges. Right. And if I need a third, and I think there's a third push, hold down the command key again, drag across, don't panic that the first two disappeared. Because as soon as I lift up off my mouse for when it pulls out, they come back. Wow, that's really, really great. Yeah. So I have three that I want to choose from. And now it's relatively easy here. I could jump. But a lot of times you'll leave the camera rolling, and you might have two or three minutes between 10 second you takes. Know, takes. Right. And it's like, ugh, how do I find that? Even with the range selections selected. So this is a great little trick that is relatively non-destructive, but really does the job. So I have these three selected. I could put a keyword to them or whatnot. I'm going to use the favorite keyboard shortcut, which is F. Right. So I'm going to favorite all of these. I hit the F key. And you'll notice the green bar comes across. Only on your selection ranges. Only on my selection ranges. And I see them listed here. And what I can do here is I can click on an individual clip, hit the space bar, play it. And if I want to see the next take, I just use the up or the down arrow. And it jumps to the next favorite. Jumps right to the next range. And I could even leave it playing and jump. So if it's playing. Wow. So it's playing. You can just jump to your selection just by clicking the favorite icon in list view. Exactly.